Martin Algren, you worked on The Plot Against America, which takes place in an alternate reality, but it's very timely. Uh, did its eerie resonance affect how you approached the show? Uh, I mean, certainly, I think uh, everyone who was working on it was intending to do something that was a comment on the present, for sure. So I think it kind of permeated everything that we did. Uh, some things, you know, because the TV show takes a bit of time to do, and I think a lot of the writing probably took, was happening like in a year and a half before before it's before the show aired. Uh, and I think there are a few things that happened that was kind of like prescient in the show. Maybe because it's so timeless, uh, it's not trying to keep up with current events, and instead kind of like going for some larger themes. And and in a way, we ended up seeing some of that mirrored in in reality before the show aired. So that was interesting. And now with the their election <laughs> at the end of the yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I know you were inspired by uh, photojournalism of uh, that era, the 1940s. So can you uh, speak about that and how you uh, came across those and decided to land on that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, anytime you're doing a period uh, piece, I think it's always interesting to go and see what uh, the visual representations were at that time, depending on uh, on what it what it is. Um, so uh, so photojournalism became like a natural kind of like starting off point and uh, uh, and I just uh, felt that, that it was uh, something that was really visually compelling uh, both like in terms of its composition and and, and how it uh, was capturing moments but also uh, you know a lot of it um, capturing stories in single frames uh, which uh, I thought was interesting and also uh, something that uh, could translate into, uh, you know, telling the story with uh, with images that kind of had layers and depth and uh, uh, and more richness in that way. Uh, and one one thing that I kind of like um, uh, latched onto was seeing that a lot of these this photography had uh, deeper focus, uh, which wasn't necessarily like a conscious style in itself, but I think it was kind of like it wasn't like the shallow focus aesthetic that we're used to today. Uh, and uh, and there were a few photos like that that really caught my attention and, and I was sort of like, oh, it would be really interesting to do this show with that. So that was one of the main things that I set up visually to do was to kind of go for a deeper focus aesthetic. So what do you have to do or like what equipment do you need to achieve a deep focus? Um, well, I mean, there's there's a few different ways. I mean, the main the main things that determine the, the level of uh, focus in the frame is, uh, is the size of your image capture. So in, in digital, the size of the sensor, basically, uh, and then your aperture. So, uh, uh, in the end, after testing and various considerations and whatever, we we decided to go uh, with a slightly smaller sensor, and we did that on the on the Sony Venice and windowing it down to uh, to three K. Uh, so it was in a sensor size that was about eighteen millimeters across. So it was somewhere between Super sixteen and Super thirty five in size. So that by itself gave gave us more focus. Um, and then the camera is also quite light sensitive, so we were shooting in the 2500 ISO mode, which allowed us to stop down more on the camera as well. So, you know, when we were shooting exterior daytime scenes, we would routinely shoot at like uh, an 11 or a 16. Uh, and even our interiors would be like a 4 or a 5.6. Um, and, um, uh, you know, with the smaller sensor, that, that gave us a fairly, fairly deep, uh, deep level of focus. Uh, when when you're shooting in deep focus, you also have to trust the audience, don't you? Because they they could because everything is in focus, and they could pick where to look at in the frame, so they could maybe get distracted by something in the background. Well, I guess you want them to look at everything in the frame, but maybe you know they. Yeah, no, I mean, I think uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. The uh, shallow focus is one of the tools we have to kind of like direct where the audience should be looking in the frame, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I think that when. Uh, you're not using that, uh, you're instead intentionally uh, creating frames where maybe there's a little more room for you to scan the image and find different levels of interest. I mean, I, I especially like um, uh, uh, got really interested in, in setting up frames with multiple people in shot, uh, and sometimes almost trying to, to make a frame that kind of stacked all the faces, so it filled left to right would be filled with different faces in frame and having all of those in focus and, uh, and just feeling like that there was something interesting and and unusual about that and, and and also sort of like allowing that image to live for a little bit longer than it would do otherwise um, and um, so so yeah I mean it, it was in some ways a new 
uh, kind of explains to me like the last few projects I've done have been large format and uh, and um, uh, wide open aperture. So it's been the opposite of what uh, what this project was. So it was it was a fun fun challenge, uh, and uh, we did do a few scenes where. Uh, we used a 6K mode on the camera and uh, with large format lenses and wide open as a kind of like a subjective counterpoint um, that then kind of stood out uh, as uh, as different from the rest of the show. And the few times we did that, the uh, the operators would go like, ah, oh, why don't we do this all the time? You know, this is uh, <laughs> it's all immediately so so beautiful. And I was like, well, you know, anyone can anyone can make uh, a shallow focus look good. Now we have to uh, work harder to... <laughs> well, I, I think we also had to work closely with like production design and everyone else, like all the other departments uh, because everything is in focus, right? Yes, and also this is a period piece. Uh, you know, it takes place in 1940 and we, it's, a, it's a location shoot. It's, uh, you know, the only set really that we built was the uh, family's apartment. Everything else is on location. So, so it was a discussion in the beginning to convince uh, both uh, visual effects and uh, the art department from a budget standpoint that this was the right approach because it sort of uh, has a, a multiplying effect in terms of cost for everything. But I think once everyone was on board, we were excited about it and, and thinking that it was uh, quite fun to be able to do street scenes and, and have a level of, of detail uh, even in the background. So, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it is very effective as well because I think um you know, when we think about like stuff from the 1940s and that era, it's very picturesque. And we also tend to romanticize the past, but there's something very like direct and straightforward about the look of the show. And it, you know, it, it's like very grounded in realism. I think it's, it is like the way you guys shot it because it feels like it could exist, which is what's so scary about it. Uh, yeah, so definitely. I mean, I, I think that even though it's a period piece that takes place in the 40s, I didn't want it to feel sentimental. Uh, you know, I wanted it to still feel uh, current, not necessarily looking like, you know, current reality or something like that. And we still obviously put a certain patina on what we were doing, but I didn't want it to be sentimental and romantic or, or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, did you also want to mimic uh, the, the light in those photographs? I'm assuming they were mostly in black and white. Um, they were mostly in black and white. Uh, we wanted to do something in color. Um, and uh, but uh, but I did want to, and I, I, I kind of inspired, uh, aspired to uh, uh, keep the light as natural as possible, uh, so that uh, there wouldn't be. Uh, I didn't want anything to feel uh, lit or artificial. I wanted it to have a very natural and direct uh, feeling, and that uh, kind of definitely was inspired by those uh, by those uh, photographs. In fact, I, I sort of kept a library of of uh, images, most of them black and white, of different light scenarios and, and like looking for opportunities to use that light scenario in a scene where it could support it, um, you know, emotionally and also, uh, you know, practically to, to kind of go in, go in a certain direction likewise. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last episode, there's a scene uh, uh, when Alvin's like recruited uh, to like work like the, the radar machine and it's outside. What was that a, a day for night shot? The, the yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that that was day for night. I mean, um, I think it was the kind of thing. No one, every. I think everyone was expecting that it was going to be a, a lit up night scenario, uh, and probably the producers were like, when I when I was saying, oh, I think it has to be day for night. I think the producers were like, oh yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> but uh, uh, but it it was partly because I wanted uh, to uh, to be able to see into the distance. They're on a mountain top. Uh, they're supposed to be, uh, you know. Uh, seeing into the into the deep background with uh, mountains and, and things like that. So, so a day for night approach it felt like the only real way to do it. Uh, and um, uh, so we did that uh, with uh, with sky replacement, and then and then we lit it on the ground, like uh, to uh, to sort of like get the levels to where we wanted. We we uh, we protected the actors from from the actual direct sunlight, so we had a controlled kind of environment to shoot in under. Um, an another a scene in that episode I really liked uh, is when Bess is on the phone with uh, Selden and she's just in the hallway and you start far from her uh, and then as she's trying to calm her down you like slowly close in on her. Can you talk about uh, filming her in that way and doing the tight close up at the end? Yeah, I mean, it, it was uh, it, it came from the director Tommy Slami uh, who who really envisioned this scene to be just that one 
single shot. Um, I think the, the B camera was hiding in the bedroom, shooting an alternate angle, and I think that's used for the very beginning. But then after that, it's this one continuous uh, uh, slow push in, uh, and I don't remember how long it is, but it's a few minutes um, as it's uh, closing in on her and ending in something that's uh, pretty extreme uh, close up at the at the end. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think we felt like it was the, the best way to just let her tell the whole story with the performance and, and sort of let that unfo unfold in front of the camera instead of trying to add something um, more yeah. dramatic to it with the camera. Yeah, you could just feel her like the suffocation and she's trying to calm this kid down and she knows like she's probably lying to him. So. Um, the, the, with deep focus, that was there any like particular scene that was difficult to do or set up because of that, or once you guys figure everything out in prep, it was, and it was pretty much like good to go. Well, I mean, I um, I sort of uh, apart from the few moments that we had this determined were like these objective moments when we went shallow focus instead. Like, uh, uh, I it sort of was the default, uh, but I did get to. Uh, learn uh, throughout the show that there were certain scenes where taking it too uh, ex too uh, too much to heart was was not in our favor. Like if you were shooting in a in a small room with very plain walls, uh, it uh, it didn't necessarily add anything to the story that uh, that the metal uh, door hinges behind the head were in focus as well. So uh, so we so in certain situations like that, I would ease up on it a little bit and 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 then. Uh, Go more towards like a slightly uh, shallower focus to separate the actors from the from the walls in the background. So uh, not always, but especially if it was like something where the the, the room itself just didn't add anything uh, character-wise. There's nothing else to look at except the foreground. <laughs> yeah. 